One of the great mysteries of this world is how Parisians stay skinny while stuffing their faces with ridiculously good food. See, Paris hasn't exactly embraced 24-hour gym culture the way Americans have. Here, if you want to stay trim while still gorging on croissant, you have to get a little creative. And I think I might have found one of the more unusual workouts in the city at the oldest fencing club in Paris. Bonjour. Merci. Vous me rappelez, je m'appelle Vanessa. This is Jean-Pierre Pinel Latol, who's going to be my charming fencing master today. Il faut déjà vous donner les chaussures, j'ai ce qu'il faut, on a déjà montré votre vestiaire, vous allez pouvoir mettre les chaussures. Ok, d'accord. <rire> the Salle d'Armes Couturier was founded during the golden age of fencing, at a time when the slightest insult exchanged between gentlemen would have likely ended in a deadly duel. La chose intéressante, c'est le plafond. Oui, ça a été fait par une élève qui n'avait pas, elle était étudiante, elle n'avait pas tellement les moyens de payer sa cotisation. Eh bien, elle a, payé, elle a fait un très joli plafond. Ah, c'est voilà. joli. Once upon a time, fencing schools were all over the city. Up until World War II, there were at least a handful of fencing clubs per arrondissement. But they've been disappearing ever since. My embarrassing socks. I feel like I'm in the dressing room of like a burlesque show. There are still a few clubs left, but none like this one. Everything has remained intact inside the club's walls since its creation in the late 19th century. Nothing has changed. The breastplate of the founder still hangs on the wall, and he was a general in the Franco-Prussian War. And when the general's aging son decided to hang up his sword, he sold it to Jean-Pierre back in 1971. And he's been fulfilling his childhood dream ever since. On garde. Allez, Comme ça? Et bon touché. Allez, voilà. <rire> J'ai gagné un point. Voilà, lui là. Non mais, genre, euh, je fais n'importe quoi là. <rire> Jean-Pierre has kept the name, the tradition, the spirit, the honor, and the teaching, just as it was in the beginning. Le bras est tendu. La Tolle has students as young as seven, but there's no age limit, young or old. This fencing school is open to all. I'm getting it. Là, allez, <laughs> so if you fancy yourself as a future musketeer, or you just want to burn off that extra pain au chocolat, just give JP a ring for a good old-fashioned workout. Oh, I think I'm in love with the fencing master. He's like one of those people that only exists in the movies. Anyway, my thighs are killing me, but I think I learnt a few moves. Uh, maybe I'll take up fencing. So now that we've got our exercise covered, I think it's time for lunch. I've always come by this place and been really curious to try it. It's been here since 1930. Picasso used to eat here. The guy, Roger, used to feed orphans here. And it's got Saint-Germain's history written all over its walls. The French have a well-earned reputation of eating things that no one else in their right mind would consider putting in their mouths. But I found that living in Paris, you need to be prepared, because you never know what you're going to be served at dinner by your future French mother-in-law. So I thought we might have a go at destigmatizing one of the scariest dishes on the French menu, or at least try to. We're at Roger La Grenouille, which has been serving frog's legs for a really long time. And I've asked if we can go into the kitchen to confront my feet.
Why the war? No, my Je m'appelle euh, Nessie et j'étais dans le quartier et j'étais toujours curieuse comment on fait des, euh, des, comment on des grenouilles. Tu me panne euh, 5 6 cuisses de grenouilles et je vais les cuire, d'accord I also really want to see if this theory about dancing frogs legs I saw on YouTube last night is actually a thing. Grenouille. C'est pas grenouille, un grenouille, c'est grenouille. Petit grenouille. Voilà. J'ai entendu que si on met du sel là-dessus, euh, elle danse. Elle danse Bon, on va essayer si vous Je, je l'ai vu sur internet. Ah bon Bon, bah écoutez, on va voir. Hein. Je pense pas qu'elle danse, euh, danse plus. Le beurre, on va le cuire. Le beurre, on va le cuire. Normalement, c'est une fois qu'on les a bien farinés, on va bien les colorer. Voilà. C'est ah comme quand vous cuisez du poisson. Je crois que je passe une tonne à deux tonnes devant les parents. Un petit peu de rice. Collet. Un petit peu de persil. Et un petit peu de Et un petit peu de Et un petit peu de Et un petit The truth behind France's national delicacy is that it was originally a dish for the poor. As the story goes, when the French monks were growing too fat, the Catholic Church banned them from eating so much meat. But the monks managed to pass off frogs' legs as fish, and a national stereotype, sorry, delicacy was born. I just want a little piece just because I really feel bad for the frog. Oh, it's cool. So some people might say this place is a cliche, but I think it's sometimes important to try cliches in Paris as a Parisian, otherwise we might be missing out on some really good places to eat. So I'm glad it came and don't be afraid of frog's legs. Stay curious and join us for more adventures in Paris with Messy Nessie Chic. On the next episode, we'll show you more of the unloved oddities, the hidden nooks and the forgotten places. The really good stuff. Also, don't forget about my book, Don't Be a Tourist in Paris. It's the one with the stripper pole on the front cover. And it's all about Paris Unknown. Find it at shop.messynessychic.com. See you next time.